Hi, everyone. Looks like people are uh, filing in fast. Good to see you. We're just now getting started. So um, we have a lot of people, we're expecting a lot of people to this event. So we're gonna hang on for just a couple minutes while people start to roll in. And your chat window is open. If people want to um, let me know where you're dialing in from, that's always really fun to hear. For those of you who just joined us, um, thank you for coming. We still are waiting for a few more people to join. Um, welcome, it looks like we've got Ashley from Costa Mesa. Okay. For those of you who just logged on, um, we're just kind of waiting for people to roll in. So just give us a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. Sandy from Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Brenda from Sacramento. That's very close to where I grew up. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous of all these Southwest people. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm in Seattle where the weather has um, definitely turned on us. So we hear. Looks like Karen from San Jose, May from Berkeley. Oh, you're really close to me. Okay, people are starting to file in. Let's give just one more minute. Okay, um, I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and get started. So, um, hi everyone, welcome to the Swing Speaker Series. My name is Michelle and I work on the marketing team at Swing Education. And today's topic is one that is very popular. We've got a lot of people who signed up for this session. It's on SEL or social emotional learning. And this session is gonna be specifically around understanding the foundations and how we can apply it to substitute teaching. And um, I wanna give you just a little bit of background on this for those of you who weren't able to join the last speaker session. Um, we've been wanting to do this series for a while, and the reason we've been wanting to do it is because we've heard from you guys that um, professional development is really important to you. And so what we wanted to do is gather together some experts, veteran teachers, um, professionals in the education space, and create an environment where they could share tips with you on um, substitute teaching and how you can address today's challenges. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, before we get started, what I'd love to understand is how many of you have prior experience with SEL. And so what I'm going to do is push out a quick Zoom poll. So you'll have a little Zoom window up here on your screen, and it'll just ask you about your experience. Okay, I just launched that. So tell us how familiar you are with SEL practices. Oh, looks like we really have um, a range. Okay, so while people are finishing up this poll, um, let me just give you a couple of Zoom webinar tips. So what you'll notice, you will have noticed when you logged on is that you cannot see yourself on camera and you cannot hear yourself. And that's because this is a Zoom, it's a webinar format. It's not a meeting format. So um, the chat window will be open if you guys want to talk to each other. And as we go through this interview, um, the Q&A window will be open. And if you think of questions that you want to ask, go ahead and jot them down. And then um, we will uh, answer those when we get to Q&A. And Jorge, hey, um, nice to see you again. Jorge has been with us a really long time. Doesn't even know what SEL is. Great. That is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, social emotional learning. So it looks like the poll is everyone's pretty much answered. So we've got a mix here. We have um, a handful of people who've heard of it and never used it. Some people with a little of experience. Quite a number of people who've never heard of it until today. And then just a tiny amount that has a, that people who have a lot of experience. So that will help us um, kind of guide the conversation. So let me close the poll um, and I can share results so you guys can see it. Okay, now I would um, love to introduce our speaker, um, Rob Lauren from Harmony SEL at National University. And Rob comes to us with a really strong background in um, education technology, a 
assessment and SEL practices. And he currently consults with districts and educational institutions to develop well, well-rounded SEL programs for those schools and districts based on what, they, what their specific needs are. And prior to being with Harmony, Rob worked in publishing. He worked with HMH. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Mm -hmm. We're calling it HMH like they do on their website. And also with Riverside Publishing where he worked in sales assessment and data management platforms for K through 12 institutions. And what we'll be talking about today is um, understanding what SEL is and we'll work on how substitute teachers and students can benefit from these practices. Even when, as in a subs case, you're only there maybe for a one day assignment, um, we'll talk about ways that you can still use SEL. So Rob, welcome to our Swing Speaker Series. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, so before we get started on the topic of social emotional learning, um, I'd just love to hear a little bit more about you and your experience with SEL training. Sure. Um, I've been with Harmony SEL for about three years now. And we, when we started, SEL was definitely a hot topic, but not nearly as um, prevalent as it is now. So I've kind of been on the forefront of the research and the practices that are coming forward. And it's, it's changing very drastically mm. day by day um, as far as the practices that we put in place, um, the research that's being produced within the field. Um, so when I was asked to do this as to speak with substitutes, I was kind of taken back because I was like, I don't really... Not sure how we can train something, but I have some great ideas for you. Um, I think all of you have a very, very tough job being in a school um, for one day at a time. And I hope I can give you some tips on how to promote SEL in the classroom for the short amount of time you're there. Just because you're there for a short amount of time doesn't mean that you can make, you can't make a, a large difference, so. Great. I work with um, people from different organizations. I won't throw out the names because I know we have a lot of people here that are familiar with SEL and aren't. Um, I'm going to show you some resources, some of the organizations I work with, some of the stuff that we do at Harmony, um, and some of the stuff that we don't do, which I think um, other organizations can help you with. Great. Thank you for that. Um... I think maybe it would be good to start, especially since there are some folks here who are hearing about SEL for the first time. Uh, maybe we'll just start with the, the benefits of using it. Um, so if you could help us frame our thinking, maybe just tell us about like exactly what SEL is. Sure. Um, do you mind if I share my screen? Oh, please do. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. I'm sorry, I'm not on the right uh, screen here. There you go. So one of the leading organizations for SEL is CASEL. And CASEL is the, I'm probably going to butcher this, is the Collaboration for Academics and Social Emotional Learning. And they are kind of like an oversight, not an oversight, but they kind of pave the way for what is social emotional learning. And they have five key competencies. So I'm going to pull those up. I want to show you those key competencies that they define what SEL is about. So the fundamentals of SEL here. And this is another resource I'm going to share with you all um, to follow up. So the way CASEL defines SEL is, again, like I said, the five, the five pillars. So self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, responsible decision-making. A lot of my work is focused on the relationship building, the responsible decision-making, and also some so social awareness. There's many programs out there. Not one of them, I feel, touches on each individual pillar within, these, within this framework, but at Harmony SEL, we feel that we are a piece of the pie. So we are really focused on that relationship and community building. And with SEL framework, 
we start it in the classroom. It expands to the school. The culture goes out to the district. We communicate with family and caregivers, and we also bring in the community. And I can explain a little more of how we do that as we go on. Um, you know, SEL supports diversi diversity and inclusion. It supports equity. It supports things as far as empathy, being kind to others, um, behavior management, and all of those things that aren't taught necessarily in our everyday curriculum, but are so vital to students' success, especially when it comes to career and college readiness. So that's my short definition of SEL. Um, SEL is an ongoing practice. It is not a course that is embedded into a school day. It needs to be embedded into curriculum and to the culture of the school, the district, the community. Okay, so it almost sounds like um, maybe way of life is too lofty of a phrase, but um, I like the way you talked about it. it's not like a one shot take a course and you're done, but it, 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 exactly. you would really benefit from integrating it. So maybe um, you can tell us a little bit more about the benefits. Um, is there data that you can share with us to demonstrate the effectiveness of some of these programs? There is tons of data. And I will tell you what we, so within CASEL, the CASEL has kind of taken all of the data and brought it all together. The things that we see stand out the most are a decrease in referrals, a decrease in classroom distraction, a decrease in bullying, an increase of achievement, school achievement. I'm trying to find the, um, uh, where is it? Trying to find the research. I had it pulled up here. Yeah, trying to drive a slide and talk at the same time over Zoom is a, a challenge. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> so what does the research say? There is a ton of research, but to narrow it down, you're gonna, again, you're going to see those decreases in um, distractions in the classroom, decreases in referrals, decreases in suspension decreases in bullying behavior, an increase in test scores. They have found that it's about 11 point increase um, on test scores once you have an SEL program that is implemented to Fidelity. So a lot of teachers will push back at times and say, we don't have the time to teach this in our classroom, but really it's a five to 10 minute activity or lesson that really actually opens up more time in the classroom because you're getting rid of those distractions. You're getting rid of those referrals. Students are more likely to speak up in class and participate as a group when they feel comfortable um, with themselves, with their peers. So all the research shows that it does increase academic performance as well as decrease emotional distress. That is actually really interesting. So it almost sounds like what you're pointing to is, you know, some a teacher might think, oh, we don't have time to do this because we've got academics to get to, but it's almost like you're saying there's an opportunity cost to actually not using some of these practices because of the distraction, the bullying, the referrals, and all that jazz. Exactly. And I will share with you that you can send out to your um, colleagues, some studies that show $1 spent on emotion, social emotional learning actually opens up $11 in other areas within the classroom because we're taking those distractions out of the classroom mm -hmm. and giving the teachers more time. And I will share that study with you. Some of these are kind of lengthy, so I don't want to get into them right now. <laughs> with yeah, everybody. I might put them to sleep. But I <laughs> okay, well, we've already got people in the chat saying, please send it out. So I think people definitely have an interest mm -hmm. in that. Um, so for sure, we'll send this out, you guys. Um, but what I did want to get to is, so we get a lot of questions from our substitute teacher community. You know, I'm here for a day. 
how can I use SEL if I'm only going to see these students for one day? Like, what do you think is the specific opportunity for a sub who would take that 10 minutes that you mentioned to do an SEL um, exercise? So I'm going to speak to our product. Um, <clears throat> and just so you all know, our program is 100% um, cost free. And that includes the actual program and the um, training. So I'm not here to pitch our program necessarily, but what I know is Harmony SCL. So what we do at Harmony SCL, like I mentioned, is really focused on relationship building and community building in the classroom. And we have two parts to our program. We have the everyday activities, whoops, jumped ahead. We have the everyday activities or everyday practices, and you'll find those on the right-hand side here. Then we have our lessons, and our lessons are on the left-hand side. And our lessons mirror the core competencies that are outlined by CASEL. And we are a CASEL select program, so we do have their stamp of approval, which we're very proud about, so I have to mention that. So with everyday practices, and this will be in the resources that I send back out, um, it's harmonysel.org. And what we do in the everyday practices is where I can really see substitutes using our program. And we have a meetup and a buddy. Up. So in a traditional classroom, everything would revolve around the harmony goals. Now you can't necessarily create goals when you're in there in the classroom for one day, but we have a meetup and buddy. Up. And the buddy ups is probably one of the most fun parts of our program and one of the most effective parts of our program. And what the buddy up is, is you have a new buddy um, every week and you get a quick connection card. And the quick connection cards could be something as simple as um, what is your favorite meal and who makes it? Or what is your favorite thing to do when you get home from school? And we play these at work as well, like in our staff meetings. We say, what's your favorite thing to do when you get off work from a long day rather than what to do when you get home from school? Um, mine is to put some sweats on and go for a walk. I don't know what you guys do, but that's what I like to do. Um, so what that does is it really opens up students to connecting with other students that maybe they would never really communicate with in the classroom. So I'm Rob, I'm sitting in the back corner of the classroom. Susan's in the front corner. I never speak with Stu Susan. We don't have much communication just because we don't share similar friends. I don't know Susan, I've never communicated with her. So it really gives them the opportunity to learn a little something more on a deeper level about their classmates. So I was thinking about this like in a substitute setting. So I know one of the like concerns with substitutes is what do we do when we don't have enough lesson, like enough material to present to the students in the classroom? That is absolutely a classic. And I would love if you could go into depth on that. I was thinking like a buddy up shuffle, like, I don't know how you could randomize it. You can randomize it however you want. Maybe assign every student a number and say, okay, all the fives get together, all the fours get together, and then kind of rotate around. And you can pick different quick connection cards. They are right here on our platform. And we also have them on an app. And that app link will be in the resources that I send to you. And they're really just kind of light questions. Um, we have one of the quick connection cards is create a secret handshake with your buddy. So if you're in the classroom and you have two students that have never really spoken or they don't have a relationship with one another and they're forced to, I hate saying the word forced, but they kind of are forced or they're tasked to create a secret handshake with their buddy it really creates a bond between those two students. And like the overall goal of that is it's kind of hard to be mean to somebody that you just learn something new about or something a little more intimate about. 
So I think that is a great exercise for um, substitute teachers. Again, I sympathize with you. You're only in the classroom for a, a day. You, you don't get a lot of time to make relationships with these students. And one thing I would really recommend for a substitute teacher is um, definitely involve yourself in those buddy ups. Maybe take on a student that is a little shy, that maybe doesn't want to buddy up with a classmate. If they're comfortable with you, maybe buddy up with that student. Share your response with the classroom. And one thing we always do in buddy ups is we always ask our buddy if it's okay if we share their response. Um, and it really just kind of like unites the classroom. I'm not going to go into it, but under training and more, we have trainings on how do you facilitate these buddy ups. And again, they're very, very easy, very easy to implement. They're very flexible but we have a video on what a buddy up looks like. And it's extremely cute. These students are asked, would you rather be under C or in outer space and why? And then they all come together at the end and they share their reasoning. Why would you rather be under C? And they're all, most of them say they'd rather be under C because there's beautiful fish. One girl's afraid because she doesn't want to go to outer space because she doesn't know what'll happen if her helmet comes off. So it's finding similarities finding differences and celebrating both of those when you're in the middle of a buddy up. And then we also have our meetups and meetups are like a circle time. Now for an every, like a traditional classroom, the meetup is kind of to address how are we tracking towards our harmony goals? So as a substitute, that probably wouldn't be as effective, but we do have a lot of community builders and those are within the quick connection cards so some of the community builders that you can use in a meetup and again it's like a circle is share a smile to the person to the left of you so you smile to the person on the left of you um, we have one it's um, you have a balloon and each student has one touch and has to go around the circle in sequential order and it's just kind of, it's a community builder. One is the handshake. So I think we've all played that game where you squeeze somebody's hand and then you squeeze the hand to the left of you and you see where it ends. Um, so it's just fun stuff like that, that gets the classroom pulled together as a unit rather than, you know, all these individuals. Um, yeah, that's actually really interesting. I like the way you talked about once you've had a conversation with someone you don't haven't met before and you learn something about them, then that there's no way you're going to either bully that person or pick on that person. Because now you can forge this it's really nice. Um, so one thing that I'm really curious about is, um, and this has to do kind of like with um, the pandemic again, is there's been, at least in the research I did, um, there's a lot of emphasis on like learning loss and academics and oh my god we got to catch up I um, mean this is really coming from you know the parents and schools not so much much the students mm -hmm. but when you start hearing that stuff like do you still feel that SEL has a place like if a substitute feels like oh I've got this you know lesson plan and I have to roll this out and this is all I'm allowed to do are there ways to I, I don't know I guess just what's your feedback on that the learning loss question you know my rebuttal would be Two part. And I'm going to share this study with you. It's from The Economist. And it talks about like the top five skills that employers want to see in recent graduates. And academics, of course, is extremely important, but it doesn't come into the picture until like the fourth or fifth skill. The top ones are ability to work with others. Um, ability to problem solve, empathy, communication. Those are the skills that employers are looking for. So SEL is always going to have a, a huge presence within education. The second part of that is 
if you're looking to if you're looking for more time and again these are studies that i will share with you it is uh, it is apparent that a strong SEL program does give a teacher more time in the classroom to focus on those academics, to reduce the distractions, to engage with students that normally wouldn't speak up in class. But with a strong SEL program, they feel the comfortability that their voice is going to be heard and not judged, which, which again, leads to academic success. So that's kind of my, uh, well, not really my personal opinion. This, the research shows that SEL does lead to those gains in those areas. Yeah, so yeah. The that, learning loss right. can be. Sounds like he's moving some of that by these practices. Practice. Like these yeah. practices are a replacement for academics. Exactly. Got it. Yeah, that, that, so I guess we just have to keep drilling that message. Um, to people who are worried about the the learning loss, but actually, I'm glad you brought up the family support because that was another question I had. So, um, I guess what I was curious about is, you know, different groups, different families. This could be like different cultures, different genders, may or may not be conditioned to like share and talk about their feelings publicly. Like, you know, for example, expressing what's perceived as like negative feelings might be taboo in some groups. So I was curious, like, does that ever come up um, in any of your training? Yes, most definitely. Um, and our response is the students will share on their own time. You don't, you do not want to force a student or um, you know, make a student share their feelings their emotions. Um, when we do the buddy ups, I've had teachers say, "Oh, I have a student that will never participate." Um, so I, I, you know, I forced him. I made him do this, and I say, "No, no, no. Let that student, let that student observe the classroom, budding up, sharing responses, working together, and eventually they'll come around." So give students their time and give them your patience. Do not force the issue with them because there are all those there are those cultural differences. Or maybe a student has social anxiety. I know my brother was an extremely shy kid. He hid in the back of the classroom. He would never want to do anything like this. Eventually, I think he'd come around. But you don't want to make it a negative experience. And that's something we do at Harmony is everything that we do is pretty fun. So let those students come around. And then as far as communicating with parents, I know that Veronica did um, a speaker series a couple of weeks ago, and we do have our platform Inspire, which is professional development for teachers. And again, it is 100% no cost, but there are a lot of modules in there on how do you deal with cultural differences? Um, what is the best way to communicate with parents? I mean, we have 72 different modules within Inspire, so I can't get into all of them. Mm -hmm. But as far as being a substitute teacher or a teacher, you know, I would urge you to look through those and see which ones may benefit you. They are all research-based. They're all done in a partnership with Edutopia. And again, as I mentioned, they are all free of cost to anybody that would like to access those. And it comes with your harmonyscl.org login. I can flip over to that if you want to see some of them, but um, that is my advice as far as okay. dealing with parents and dealing with students that may not necessarily be ready to share. Okay. Um, yeah, we do have some of those. Victoria, sorry, Veronica did share some of those links. And what I can do um, for the audience is include that in the email that. Um, we send out after this presentation and I'll see if I can dig around and find those specific um, questions on like dealing with parents and you know, cultural issues and that kind of thing. Um, one thing I did wanna ask is, you know, because a lot of these activities that you're describing sound super fun. Um, I was wondering, and at least I found this in my research as well. It seems like there's a lot of emphasis on 
integrating SEL into the curriculum for like K through six. And I didn't see a whole lot on older students. And I'm, I get the first part of my question is like, what's, do you know why that is? And what is the benefit for older students? I have some thoughts around that. And I actually was just peeking at chat and somebody wants to know, is the dog okay? Which I'm kind of curious. Yeah, that's my fault because my crisp microphone, which is supposed to be blocking <laughs> dog barking, I it is off and I can't turn it on, I think, without killing the Zoom. So that's fine. I'll try to be muted. <laughs> so I've spoken with this, I've spoken about this topic with my colleagues. And we do have a lot of our districts because we're only K through six. And we do have a lot of our districts that ask, when are you going to expand a middle school? When are you going to expand a high school? Why are all these programs focused on elementary? And some of what I hear is the secondary, like middle school and high school, those teachers are focused on a certain subject. Whereas elementary school, those teachers are focused on the whole child. So it's easier to implement in the earlier grade levels as far as teacher buy-in goes rather than the middle school and high school. And also what I've heard, and I don't know if I agree with these um, comments necessarily, but these are opinions in the field from people that are smarter than myself that it's easier to be proactive in elementary and maybe middle than being reactive in high school, which I think is kind of a shame. I think everybody should have the access to a social emotional learning curriculum. We do have a lot of middle schools and high schools that use our meetups buddy ups and our harmony goals um we are not designed for middle school and high school students and honestly that is an extremely hard question and i'm not sure if there's not enough research on how to deliver social emotional learning to teachers or i'm sorry to teenagers or if it is that you know, teachers in those older, in those later grades are more focused on mathematics, science, English, and they feel as though it takes away from their hour that they have with their students to accomplish the goals that they have in that short amount of time. Um, so yeah. that is an issue and it is a concern. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, it just sounds like, almost sounds like you're saying like the industry just like isn't there yet, but probably should consider going there. Then there are programs out there. I, I think it's part of um, an institutional thing as far as education and, you know, the way districts are set up in our current environment, as well as um, the resources that are out there as far as six through 12. Mm -hmm. I see more and more coming on the market. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share with you um, a really great document that lays out about 33 different programs and kind of rates them as far as like what pillar they focus on and what grade levels they focus on. So there are programs out there. Um, I'm not an expert on each and every one, but for the main, for the most part, when it comes to SEL, it is that pre-K six age range. I would like to see that change. It needs to change, but that's kind of where we are in our journey to provide SEL to students. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do a little quick shout out to the audience. So if you guys, you guys are asking really awesome questions, I would love it if you could put those in the Q&A window so that when we get to Q&A, we don't miss them. So just make sure that you're typing your questions in the, the Q&A and we'll, we'll get to those um, when we get to the Q&A at the end. Um, now, Robert, one thing I wanted to ask you because we're, we've been focusing a lot on the benefits to students. Um, I was curious about the benefits to the practitioner, like the teacher. And the reason I wanted to know this is because 
as a substitute, you're not necessarily going to spend, a, a, I mean, you may be in a long-term assignment and we do have substitutes that are in long-term assignments, but generally speaking, you're not going to spend mm. an extended period of time with your students to kind of watch them grow socially and emotionally. And you're not going to really witness that change. So my question is, is there a benefit um, to the substitute teacher for just, just by virtue of engaging in some of these exercises with students? I think I think so. And I was talking to my coworker about this the other day, and she was telling me, you know, students will learn on a higher level if they understand that the teacher cares. So if you get into these social emotional practices and you're participating as a substitute, as an educator, and they see that you care, I think it builds respect and it builds um It's the end of the day and my brain's freezing. Um, definitely builds credibility that you do care about this classroom, even though you're there for a day. And I guess it's hard to like measure or to see the growth of the students. But let's say we do a buddy up and one student does connect with another student. I mean, that kind of makes your day worthwhile, in my opinion, you know, because those students are going to remember that. If they remember one thing about you and they're like, oh, yeah, Miss Johnson came in. We did those fun buddy ups or we did that fun meetup. Um, you know, you're creating classroom camaraderie. It's hard to see that growth and to measure that over time. But I'm confident that it's there and that. Let me close that. So, yeah, that's a very tough question. But those are my thoughts on on that yeah i mean that's that's persuasive i think you're not um, going to see those percentage they, they, yeah they know that you're not faking it so you're not going to see those the growth in test scores and you're not going to see the reduction in referrals that we speak about but you are making a difference in those students lives by teaching them to ask questions to their peers to respect their peers' opinions, to respect the differences, celebrate the commonalities. I mean, that could be done in a short amount of time. And I think that as substitute teachers, it's a shame that you don't, you don't reap the benefits in the long run, but just know that it is making a difference. That's great to hear. Thank you. Um, I, I had other questions for you, but I see so many questions coming through the chat. I kind of feel like it would be beneficial to the audience if we just pivoted over to that, um, if that's all right with you. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, I just want to say again, so to wrap up, we will be sending out these links, um, but I do want to go to some of the questions. So, um, Sorry, it's just got extremely dark here. <laughs> no worries. So um, Rochelle is asking, I'm just curious if you're familiar with board games, Felix and Dixit, Dixit, and if you feel things like that have a role to play in SEL. I am not familiar with them. We, yeah. hmm. at Harmony SEL, we do have games. Um, our third through sixth, grade lessons are focused on games, role-playing. Um, so I, that is a great tool to use to teach SEL. I'd have to look into these two feelings and Dixit. Um, but I'm sorry, I, I've never heard of them. It's a, yeah. Um... It's a great, I mean, it's a great way to connect with students and have students connect with one another through role-playing and game-playing. Um, Okay. So, yeah. And then Tina is asking, how much is training and is there a certification? Now, I know that your resources on Harmony are free of charge, but um, is there um, a certification uh, process if somebody wanted to, to get that, to get certified? No, there's not a certification process and it is completely at no cost. So we do have our... Um, like our on-demand trainings on our website. And if you go to trainings and webinars, 
we do have live trainings for everyday practices and lessons and activities. And then if you want additional training, you could reach out to somebody like myself and we can put you in touch with a live trainer that would be happy to help you and guide you and answer any questions that you might have. Um, just got some comments here that I'd like to read. So Karen um, just has a comment, a cultural lesson I learned this week after being at a low social and economical middle school was that there was a handshake I was doing with the students. It was something my son did as a child. I was pretty good at this handshake. It turns out, um, oh no, <laughs> that that was a, sorry, what local gangs did. Okay, so it sounds like, um, yeah, something that shouldn't be improvised. Um, I don't know if I meant to read that comment. Um, yes, that's, I mean. You know, actually that is related to a question I had though. I guess one of, the, one of my questions was, um, is yeah. there something that we need, anything we need to watch out for? Have you ever seen any of these practices go sideways? Yeah, you know, you never know where these questions can take you. Mm -hmm. Like um, one of your staff members commented that they were doing gang handshakes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you don't want to see it, but it could happen. So just be aware of what's happening in the room. In the meetups, we do have questions and sometimes they kind of take turns and we'll catch teachers off guard. Mm -hmm. um, you might have a student, I mean, I've, I've spoken with teachers that um, a student's father was incarcerated the night before, mm -hmm. their cousin, um, was shot in the streets i mean there's heavy 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 stuff out there so they can go awry i would say a substitute since you're in there for one day is like pick the lightest questions um stay away from the deep controversial topics as far as maybe because we do have a lot of um professional development around dealing with racism um dealing with bullying in the classroom i would say as a substitute keep it as light as possible because you're only there for that day or that short amount of time but when we're talking about <clears throat> social emotional learning and we're asking these kind of questions and asking students to share their feelings and share their responses we don't know what we might get so be ready for it. Um, it's a hard, I mean, that's a really, really hard question. Mm -hmm. I don't don't think the magic I would have to go back to children. some of our scholars to ask for advice on how would you deal with that as a substitute or deal mm -hmm. with that as a teacher, but it's going to happen. And that's, Kind of what social emotional learning is here for mm -hmm. is to address those issues but when you do when they do come up it's heavy and it's hard so i don't really have a great answer there other than well i think acknowledging that it happens is i mean that's like the kind of honesty honest conversations we want to have here so yeah. you know i think that's i'm glad that you did acknowledge that that that, that happens and you know just to let our subs know like you said you know try to keep it light um, you'll still get the same benefit, um, which leads me to um, this next question. Mary is asking, are there certain modules that would be particularly helpful for subs? And I know you mentioned the meetup, the buddy up already. Is there anything else that comes to your mind that um, a sub might want to tap into? Hold on. For some reason, my computer's not charging and I'm really afraid it's going to die. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, I'll let Why you. Why is it doing that. this? Come on now. They're the modules within Inspire. I don't know if they're asking about Inspire or Harmony. I think specifically Harmony. For Harmony, yes. I would definitely focus on the meetup and the buddy ups and go in there and look at like the guiding questions that, because we basically tell you step by step how to create a buddy up, how to create a meetup. There is, there are a lot of great um professional development modules with within an inspire that i can go through the map and kind of pull out the ones that i personally think would be very beneficial to substitutes 
And I would also recommend if you are an elementary teacher to go back and look or to go look at some of the lessons that we have within because we didn't really speak to the lessons whatsoever go back and look go and look at the lessons because we have a lot of storybooks that have questions that speak to diversity and inclusion problem solving and the lessons are all super fun it's all about this martian named z who crash lands his um, spaceship into a playground and the teachers have to, or the teachers, the, the kids in the playground have to teach him how to be a responsible human. And there are lots of great guiding questions. And that's another time that like, if you have a gap in your lesson planning and you need to fill some time, those are great 20 minute, 30 minute lessons that you can go through and they're very light they're not you don't need to be a scholar to implement these um so maybe just pick out a, a few of them that you really like that you're comfortable with and kind of have those in your back pocket um, I'm gonna Great, change thank, this you. thank you well um we are at time so i just want to give um folks another couple of minutes to put in a question if you haven't already and um I did want to um, bother you with one last poll, um, if I can get this thing to pop up. So we would like to know, and ooh, this must be a technical difficulty day. Where is the second poll? Um, I am having a hard time posting that second poll. So I think that I will go ahead and skip it. Ah, here it is. Okay. Um, desire for further learning. So um, I'd love to know from you guys um, if you would like to hear more about SEL and hear from more SEL speakers. And um, let me launch this right now. And while people are um, answering that, I'm going to go ahead and check the Q&A to see if we have any additional questions. Um, yeah, so Robert, so for your information, we asked them desire for further learning and the options were, yes, I would like one to two more sessions. Yes, I want as many sessions as possible. And no, this was enough. And uh, overwhelmingly, I would say people want more. So um, this is a, definitely a hot topic and we'll absolutely be sharing these resources out. It's a large topic. So I, I would hope you all want more because we just scratched, we even scratched the surface. Great. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, well, this was really, really informative. I feel like I learned a lot and I'm not a substitute teacher. Um, so I know um, our audience uh, is really um, happy to have been here today. And I know they're excited to get their hands on those resources. Oh, hang on. Yeah, and really quickly, mm -hmm. I'm going to send these out, but if anyone's like chomping at the bits to get more information, the way, the sites I go to the most, number one is Castle. Um, they basically have everything on social emotional learning, all the research, all of the different programs, um, different events and webinars. Every, they're a nonprofit organization. Um, they do not create social emotional curriculum. They are just kind of advisors. So this is a great site to get started. The other one I really like, and this one's kind of heavy. Mm. It's the Wallace Foundation. And there is a report. And within this report, it's like 500 pages. So don't like, don't get scared when you look at it because I have only read like 20 pages. But tons of information, SEL programs in an OST setting. And I was kind of reading through this and thinking of you guys because the OST market, they don't really have those students for a long period of time. So how do you get the most out of their SEL time in a short amount of, um, you know, in a short setting? And then they also have all the different well, these aren't all of them, but they have a ton of resources. Some of these are free. A lot of them are paid programs. 
but they do kind of um, explain which ones touch on um, which aspects of SEL, whether it's behavior management, community building, relationship building. So I really like this document. And the third one I want to show you, and I'm going to send all these, is the UNICEF. Oh, I can't move my thing. Sorry, I've got something blocking me here. UNICEF Kid Power. There are tons of free activities revolving around SEL. So here you can see social emotional learning and physical activities. Um, they have a lot of games, a lot of things you can use in the classroom as a substitute that are very easy to implement. They're fun and they're free. So um, I wanted to throw a plug in for them because they've done a really good job with um, what they've had to offer at no cost as well. Okay, thank you for those. I've got those um, jotted down and I'll be digging them I'll up. Send you a, oh. I'll send you a document with all the resources that I've mentioned. Fabulous. Okay, it looks like we um, getting a lot of thank yous. So um, we don't have any other questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you get to the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for this. This was really wonderful. I hope so, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. We just got one last comment. Um, Jorge Torres has been with us for a long time. As a sub in the Bay Area, I've been in the toughest schools and wherever I've been, it's been very successful. The students, the administrator have been extremely happy. The greatest challenge subs face is their own emotions. Once they're in control of their own emotions, they'll be in control of the classroom. Um, That's a great comment. And to anybody else that is kind of feeling that way, we do have a lot of modules within Inspire us for our self-awareness for mm -hmm. yourself as a teacher. Um, so yeah, great comment, Jorge, I completely agree. All righty, um, thank you so much, Robert. Um, I really appreciate it and um, this was great. All right, well, thank you all for your hey, time. Bye-bye. <laughs>